Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a look at port forwarding for your flux node. If you like the flux content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. That will help me out a great deal. But enough of plugging my channel, let's jump into the content. Now in today's video, we are going to have a look at typically what at least I believe the most common issues that people have with a flux node and that's the networking side of their flux node. Now, within the networking side, there is really two options that you can go with, depending on how many nodes you are planning to host at home. And again, you know, this video is specifically for those people that are hosting their nodes at home. Now, if you're going to run one node at your home, typically what you would need to do is port forwarding. And that's specifically what we're going to have a look at today. Now, if you're going to, or planning to run multiple nodes and you're running, or you want to run two or three or up to eight nodes at home, you will need to go and have a look at UPMP. But that is a topic for another video. In this video specifically, we are going to have a look at how I'm going to port forward and make sure that my flux node that is on this little mini computer is working appropriately. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video of unboxing this little computer, I'll leave a link in the video description in case you're interested. But enough talking about it. Let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to port forward this specific node. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now, on the left hand side, I've got three web pages open that I'll use to troubleshoot and show you guys what to do. On the right hand side, I have SSH'd into my flux node. Now, first off, I'm going to show you the typical problem that you would see, and then we would go ahead and fix that and then have a look at the result. So that's a general flow of what we're going to do. Now, the first thing is I've logged into my flux node. So first off, I need to change the user to be the flux user for uh, my node. So I'm gonna go issue and then cumulus. Uh, it's going to ask me for a password. So I'll go ahead and put that in. So when you installed or created your flux node, it was assigned against a specific user. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do is change the user. Now, next up, we are going to have a look at the actual issue and what is the issue that you would see on your flux node. Now that will typically happen specifically, as I mentioned, if you've got network issues specifically in the benchmark section. So how do I see the benchmarks or the results of the benchmarks right here? Now there's a couple of ways. So I'll actually show you both of those. Now on the left hand side, I've got my flux node website open. And if I go to guides, and I scroll a little bit down, I've got some troubleshooting section here and probably for the guys that have used my site probably never went here, but um, specifically in relation to manage the benchmarks here is number 19. If I open up that, here is some commands that I can copy and paste just to have a look and manage the benchmark results. So first off, what I'm going to do is check what is the current benchmark. So if for that, I'm going to copy and paste this link, flux bench CLI, get benchmarks paste it in here and hit enter. Now looking at the benchmark results here, you can see it's currently the status is saying failed and then across the board is saying zero across the RAM, SSD, ping, uh, benchmarks, everything is just saying zero. And at the bottom here, it shows you the actual error message here. So it says failed error, um, on Flux OS response, Flux is not available for the outside network. And the big reason for that is I haven't done any network configuration specifically for this Flux node. Now, something else that you can use to troubleshoot your node, and if I go back to my site and scroll a little bit at the bottom here at number 25, is this little um, link here around the command or app that Car created. Now, if I copy and paste this, and then paste it in here and hit enter. It will open up his little app here. And it's pretty cool. Let me show you guys sort of what it looks like. Now you can see here, he's got a menu here at the bottom where you can navigate to various different things. And here you can see sort of what your version is. Is it synced? Is it not synced? Uh, what your maintenance window is, any of those type of things. Now specifically, I know I've got an issue with the benchmark, but in that case, I'm gonna hit B here on my keyboard. And then it will actually show me the same type of information here. So it will have a look at the logs and then display the same type of information. So again, this is just another tool that you can use in order to help you to troubleshoot your node. Now, what does this error actually mean? Um, it basically means that there is something wrong with my network configuration. And as I mentioned earlier, regards to networking, there's really 
two options or at least the two most common options. If you're running a single node, I would encourage you to do port forwarding. And if you're running multiple nodes, I would imagine you would need to do UPnP up to eight nodes. Now, specifically, this video is just one node, so I'm going to do port forwarding and I'll do a UPnP video hopefully in the future. Now, what I'm going to do is I need to port forward, but what ports do I need to forward? Now, for that, I'm just going to use um, the website here on the left hand side with the official flux guide. And here on step 8b, it shows you in your router, you need to set up port forwarding both TCP and UDP for the range um, 16124 to 16129 and then range, uh, what is it, 30,000 to 39999. And um, these two port ranges is what I need to go and port forward specifically to the IP address for my node here. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so let's go ahead and port forward. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is port forward to the specific IP address of my flux node here. And in case you forgot, which I doubt it, to be honest, uh, because you've just SSH into it. Uh, but in case you did forget, let me just quit out of course little app here. In case you forgot what the IP address is, you can use the command IP space A, and it will show you here what the IP address is of your flux node. And this is the IP address that we are going to port forward. So what will happen is the outside network will hit your public IP in your router. And that's what we're going to do next is we are going to forward these ports as soon as it hits your uh, router specifically to this IP address here. So when somebody is trying to communicate to you with these ports, on your outside IP, it's going to forward that traffic specifically to your flux node. And that's um, what we need to go ahead and do next. Okay, so the next step we are going to port forward. Now for that, I've logged into my router here and this is where it gets interesting depending on um, you know what router you have, the steps might be different. Now I'm using PFSense as my firewall or my router here. And where I'm going to go is specifically on my firewall. I'm going to go to NAT and then I'm going to add a new NAT here. So I'm going to click add and then the interface is WAN, IP04, protocol here as the guide mentioned is TCP UDP. As soon as um, the WAN gets hit, I am going to port forward a specific port range here. And if I go back to the guide here, it's 124 to 16129. So I'm just going to specify that in there and then change it to nine here. And then at the bottom here, this is now where I'm going to specify what IP address it's going to go for. Now, in my case, it's going to be 192.168.1.223. And um, the redirect target port, that's just the first port of the range here. So I'm just going to be putting that in. And then what, again, what I like to do is specify a description here. So the description, at least in my case, is going to be Flux OS ports. Um, and again, if you've got lots of different NAT rules here, it just shows it up nicely for you. So what I'm going to do here, as soon as the interface hits the WAN, IPv4, go and route this TCP UDP traffic to this specific IP. So what I'm going to do is click save. Um, in PFSense, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to apply these changes? I'm going to say apply. And then what I'm going to do, as you can see here, is I've applied one range now. Now I'm lazy, so I'm going to copy this and just change the ports. Um, and then for that, I'm just going to say copy here. And then I'm going to change it to the ports that is specified in the flux guide here. So I'm just going to specify that, go back in here and then change this, um, change that and just change this to 9999 um, and then put that there. And then I'm going to change this port here. Um, this is for flux applications. Um, again, there's two specific port ranges. The first port range is specific for Flux OS. The second port range, and that's the one that I'm configuring at the moment, is the one that is specific to the applications that will be hosted on your Flux node. So specifically what I'm going to do next is just hit the save button. It's going to ask me a sure, and I'm going to say yes, I'm going to apply the changes. Now, what I've done now is successfully port forwarded 
that specific traffic to this IP address of my node. Now, something that I didn't mention that you should be really doing is you should make this IP address or the, at least the internal IP address of your Flux node, make sure it is static. So um, again, depending on your router that you use, it might be different how you're going to do that, but it just make sure that this thing is static. Why is otherwise your port forwarding here? If the IP address changes specifically for your Flux node, let's say the IP lease expired and it gets a new IP, then these port forward rules wouldn't apply anymore. So just, um, you know, remember to do that. And that's something that I have made a mistake with in the past. So that's why I just wanted to let you guys know at least. Okay, so now that I have successfully port forwarded, what I'm going to do is go back to my guide section here and then copy and paste cars, little troubleshooting um, script here, and then paste that in here, back into our node, and then open up that again. And what I'm going to do is specifically have a look at the benchmarks. Now you might need to restart the benchmarks in case um, you know it hasn't restarted automatically, but what will happen is as soon as you start failing benchmarks, it will just keep on retrying every couple of minutes here. So um, I'm just gonna hit B to have a look at the benchmarks because I've given it a little bit of time and it's now successfully retried. Now, what you will see now is I'm actually getting successful or at least results here. Um, and as you can see, the benchmark is now connected. Um, it's still saying failed. And the reason why it's saying failed is because my upload speed sucks here in Australia, unfortunately. I've only got 21 or 20 megs up. Um, but you can see I'm actually getting results here. So I just need to obviously sort out my upload speed, which is not gonna get sorted anytime soon. But this is more to provide you guys a guide around how to port forward. But at least as you can see here now, I am specifically passing um, m most of the benchmarks, at least I'm getting results and I can tackle the real issue now that the networking component has been sorted out. And that's really how easy it is to um, port forward. Specifically, again, as I mentioned, I'm using PFSense here, but um, depending on your router, uh, it might look a little bit different. But the key takeaways here is try and make your IP address, at least your internal IP address for your Flux node, make sure that is static, and then port forward those specific two ranges. Again, the one is for Flux OS, the other one is for applications. Make sure that you port forward that traffic onto your Flux node. And once you do that, then um, again, you'll start seeing benchmark results. That's it for this video, guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.